Self-actualization is a choice, a choice to continuously strive throughout our daily agenda to make evident the person we perceive ourselves to be on the inside. Usually, this involves a series of undertakings that are difficult for those to carry out, especially if not attuned or aligned with the purpose of one's existence. Most of us experience the days of our lives unaware of who we really are at the core of our being. Contrarily, it is such knowledge of our unique and individual truths that would make the manifestation of an envisioned self a lot less complex than most may believe. It simply takes a certain amount of diligence, inner communication, and a commitment that only the passionate and strong-willed are equipped to exercise. It takes focus, perseverance, and extreme patience. Is this you? Here is the key that most of us tend to lose along the way as we endeavor completion. While on the road to fulfilling a life aspired, it is just as crucial that you place great effort into cultivating inner, that's your soul and your spirit, inner growth as you do nurturing your personal growth and attainment, which is your mind and your body. Even in recognizing that this alone is a recurring assignment we must tend to daily, realistically moment by moment there comes with it the challenge of simultaneously maintaining this alignment of the two planes of existence to do this staying attuned to the truth that resides within is vital as you exceed the different levels of consciousness in your attempt to reach your greatest potential investing the time to reflect and stay in partnership with your authentic self is a great idea check in from time to time Listening for revelations imparted by your spirit will enable you to decipher what is right from what is wrong for your life. Now mind you, the word right and the word wrong, those are relative to each individual. But you can ask this question, how will I be able to distinguish the difference? Remember, whatever lives inside of you will certainly manifest itself in your outer world. Whether it entails attracting the things that line up with what you believe to be necessities or offering yourself for the service of others, being mindful of your feelings, beliefs, thoughts, and desires helps you to comprehend what occurs in your surroundings. It also helps you to discern whether or not you are living in accordance to the conditions or belief systems that have been ingrained in your mind by figures of authority, your peers, or society throughout your previous years. Living harmoniously with your truth and in accordance to what feels quote-unquote right will not only aid in carrying out your life in a moral sense, but rather will also enable you to gauge the distance between who you are now and the self that you've envisioned since you first understood the concept of future. Here's another key that may help you return to or fall back into alignment with the journey you intended since the days of your youth. It is your thoughts and ever-expanding imagination that helps you envision steps and pathways leading to your highest potential. But it is your feelings and emotions that serve as the quote-unquote intention compass you are to follow in order to reach wholeness and completion. It is the act of paying attention to how you feel about your life including your surroundings, your relationships, your endeavors, goals, behaviors, and physical being thus far that will propel you forward as well as determine the pace and fashion in which you proceed. You will also be more inclined to make choices and decisions that are less detrimental than those you may have already made. In order to fully ascertain feelings and emotions that may arise in your pursuit of achievement, including those times where you backslide or regress, You must understand and know who you truly are at the core of your being. Identifying your truth and understanding the importance of maintaining your truth allows you to move into realization as a whole or complete individual. It enables you to recognize areas of release or modification so that you can be effective in your progress. Thus, honoring, trusting, appreciating, accepting, cultivating, and continuously connecting with the higher intelligence that makes you unique will eventually and naturally become your way of life. Again, the objective is to get you to understand the impact of living in compliance to what you aspire to achieve, both in spiritual and personal endeavors. 
Using an emotional compass is the easiest way to stay on course and mindful of the decisions and choices that will help you to do so. I encourage you to fully grasp the information I just shared with you before you proceed, especially being that the majority of us have spent a greater part of our lives living in accordance to what someone else thought was or is right. Keep in mind that it is not necessary to judge the fact that you were or are following someone else's map. However, it is important that you begin to understand that you have the opportunity to make the choice to take a detour simply by asking, what is right for me and the life I aspire to live? Now let's discuss why it is imperative that you approach your journey through mastering the art of making decisions that are quote unquote right for the life your spirit seeks to experience through you, its vessel. Every being on this planet is amazingly distinct in our mission of fulfillment. Though we all are energetically connected to one another, the intended experiences and paths we take to ascend towards our greatest aptitude is completely different. Aside from abiding by the traditional rules, regulations, standards, and conditions set by society, we often have a tendency to confuse admiration as inspiration or as an invitation to follow the footsteps of those who have already attained that which we desire on the inside. This too is common. It is what makes us human. Yet at some point, we must endeavor to become the example instead of being one who follows the example. Opportunity for this is offered to us moment by moment. One of the greatest revelations I learned in my studies is that the emotion or energy of envy can serve to be destructive or constructive depending on how it is used. In most cases, coveting what another has gained blocks, gifts, and provisions we are meant to accomplish, achieve, or attain. This is due to the allowance of a festering energy, which only causes stagnation and breeds negative sentiments such as doubt, resentment, or frustration about your failure to achieve your own desires, which in this case looks exactly what so-and-so already possesses. It doesn't take a philosophical protege to comprehend how these types of emotions move us away and distract us from our own successes. That is, until one discovers how to use the emotion of envy to spark their own passion and be inspired through the example that stands before them to fulfill their own purpose. Contemplate this for a moment. Have you ever noticed what happens when you make choices based on the input of others or what has transpired in the life of someone you hold in high regard? Have you noticed how things either don't work out the way that you envision, which of course is illustrated through the external example of one who you have idolized, or you just don't feel completely connected to your endeavors? You may have even felt apprehensive, hopeful, afraid, doubtful, or even aggravated when obstacle after obstacle continues to fall before you. Or what about those spells in your life when you knew exactly what you needed to do to get to where you needed to go, only you just couldn't muster up enough excitement to get going? Well, this occurs because you are out of alignment. You are not following your truth or your passion. You are following someone else's truth, which may ultimately mean you have your eyes focused on the manifestation rather than on the mystery of quote unquote going through your own process. We want things now, and we want cookie-cutter examples, formulas, and recipes to follow to get us to the money, the cars, the house, the status, etc. But what about the purpose behind your motivation? Is what you want to attain all for selfish gain, or do you want things so that you may somehow evolve into a bigger piece of the universal puzzle that naturally falls into place consequent to heartfelt pursuit? Maybe it's time to start considering which may be the most rewarding for you. The quick and easy hustle or the timeless journey of becoming you. Flipping the coin for a minute, think about previous occasions where you followed a passion, a dream, or a goal, and everything fell into place without as much effort as you'd intended to exert. Resources and people became available without much coercion. Avenues and doorways opened up the moment you stood before them. Perhaps that, su- perhaps the success and achievements you visualized reaching came about much sooner than you anticipated. 
This is how life unfolds when you fall into alignment. When you follow the laws of cause and effect. Your cause, your responsibility is to physically bring to life the desires of your heart that have been purposely implanted by your spirit. The effect, well, your life will simply unfold as it should. When you resist abiding by this law, your life becomes choppy, dissected, and filled with ups and downs, confusion, and frustration. Why? Well, it's simple. Because you're trying to live a life without purpose and passion. I once heard a man say, Life unfolds in spite of you, not because of you. What he implies through this statement is that no matter how many obstacles fall before you, no matter what conditions appear to be insurmountable as you experience them, life will still unfold with or without your participation. Now, this does not mean that your life continues whether or not you are dead or alive. What he means is that all things will eventually lead you back to what is quote-unquote right for your life in order for you to carry out what you intended at the beginning. What takes so long for things to unfold for us oftentimes has much to do with our need to be in control, our impatience, stubbornness, closed-mindedness, and a tendency to follow pathways that are not uniquely designed for our distinct journeys. Thus, obstacles that create pain, discomfort, and distractions become temporary detours that we must eventually circumvent in order to learn lessons. Sometimes it is the only way we become better suited for the road ahead. So, if it takes you 50 years to finally get it quote-unquote right, then so be it. Now, you may arrive to the point of actualization in one piece, or maybe even broken, confused, bruised, and exhausted. Either way, you will arrive. It all depends on what you do, what you believe, and what you follow now. This is all the more reason why deliberating the truth of who you really are is very, very crucial. When you do this, you will start to see that the time that it takes for a thought to become a reality gets shorter and shorter. Now, let's talk about how determining whether or not you are choosing what is quote-unquote wrong for you by following other people's rights. As I stated previously, we can sometimes look at how the events of our lives unfold to help us determine whether or not we have made a habit out of living in accordance to what is right in the eyes of others. It may be best to start off with asking yourself a few key questions that will give you a better understanding of that which you are versus that which you are not. So you can ask yourself these three questions. Who am I at the core of my being? What is my purpose, my truth, and my message? Is fulfilling a purpose and carrying out my message even necessary? Or am I all right with simply existing until it is time for me to pass on? I encourage you to really take the time to listen to your true answers. It is unwise to settle for the first few answers that come to mind. I recommend stepping away for a few minutes, a few hours, or even a few days before continuing this podcast. Hearing the correct answers to these queries is what will help you make the first fundamental steps towards living in accordance to your truth. May I also suggest writing down your answers, especially to question number one. Here's a tip. When answering, who am I at the core of my being? Try to think beyond the moment. Tap into remembrance of the person you prophesied being when you were a child. Consider your gifts, your talent, and your unique abilities that have been laying dormant consequent to the negative words and opinions offered by your elders. Rekindle your relationship with the envisioned being that you have suppressed as a result of fear. Also, allow yourself to wonder in the legacy you feel compelled to leave behind once your lifetime here on earth has reached its end. Think of all your natural characteristics, your innate desires, your hopes, and your dreams. Think of all the things that speak to the authentic self that if carried out will make you the most joyous, centered, fulfilled, and humble, yet proud person on this planet. Now that you have your answers, here is where the most pivotal conversation with self must occur. Here is where you begin to compare what you are doing and how you are living and behaving now to the life you know to be true in your heart and mind. The life that you know you are meant to live from the depths of your soul. 
Remember I mentioned the subject of using your feelings as an emotional compass to gauge how close you are to self-actualization or even how far off course you may be to living your authentic vision? Since you have taken the first commendable step to deeply connecting with the truth of your original self, be encouraged to ponder answers to the following questions. How do I feel about the state of existence in this very moment? How do I feel about my state of existence in this very moment? How do I hope to feel when I get back into alignment? Who am I and what am I doing when no one else is looking that attributes or detracts from the life I aspire to live and the goals I aspire to reach? Am I living the truth of my authentic spirited self? How close am I to living my truth and what is it I need to bring me closer to the self I envision? Answers to these questions will also be useful in your endeavor to live life fully and in complete awareness of your choices and decisions. Most importantly, they will help you discern whether or not you are living in accordance to what others, this includes your family, your friends, spouses, parents, etc., to what others may think is best for your life. Do not be alarmed if and when you discover that you have not been living your authentic life. The majority of people in this world are too afraid to live from the inside out. It takes a certain amount of courage and rebellion to stand up to live in truth to what it is that you feel in your spirit, as well as in harmony with your unique gifts, talents, and passions, despite what others may think of you. It takes a certain amount of strength and maturity to comprehend messages that are delivered to your mind through the emotions you feel when you are on course or out of alignment with your purpose. As an individual who is obviously ready to start living your truth, I challenge you to dig a little bit deeper and contemplate how you would feel if your time here on earth reached its end and you never lived your truth. There have been countless cases where successful people experienced tearful transitions simply because they died with their song still inside of them. I imagine that there is no amount of money that could quiet the regret one feels for having spent their time being and living by someone else's standards, rules, concepts, and beliefs. As you move into your next level of consciousness, make certain that you fully understand the importance of being attuned to your emotions. From this instant forward, become aware of how useful your feelings are in your endeavor to reach goals and dreams, despite of what others may desire for you. Good emotions, those emotions that make you happy, inspired, enthusiastic, make you feel loved, courageous, strong, peaceful, elated, encouraged, or blissful. Those emotions indicate that you are on course or in alignment with your truth. And of course, the negative emotions that make you feel anxious, frustrated, disappointed, angry, rejected, sad, fearful, resented, or even weak. These emotions reveal that there are some major areas of work, inward and outward. It is through reflection that you will be enabled to discover what sacrificial decisions and modifications must be rendered in order to stay on the constant path of reaching for what feels better moment by moment. Here are a few queries that will get you moving toward living your truth and away from the habit of cowering to the conditions and expectations that others have on your life. Am I at peace with where I am today? How would I like to feel? What do I need to do to get me on track to feeling better about my life in this moment? I encourage you to start off small so that these goals are attainable and not too overwhelming to achieve. No one can accomplish their dreams or goals or become the person that they envision overnight. Keep in mind that the overall goal or vision that we have in our minds can sometimes be overwhelming, which inadvertently causes inertia. Thus, neither right nor wrong choices can be made, which essentially makes it difficult to move from one level of potential to the next. If this is the case for you, Simply take the time to ponder all of the questions in this chapter. Digest all of your thoughts and emotions. Listen for the small voice inside of your head before you make a move. If still the thoughts are too overwhelming, start by asking this one question. 
What would make me feel most comfortable to have completed by the end of this day? When you can move from day to week to month to year, you will discover that you are well on your way to creating the life that you aspire. I mention this because sometimes looking at the overall picture, the big picture is too grand. Therefore, you need to dissect what you envision about your life into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until you're no longer afraid to move and take that first step. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles starts right beneath your feet. So if you take one step at a time, then it's easier for you to focus on your next step. It only takes a blink for you to recognize the essence of that which is truly you. Rather than a blink though, this time, close your eyes for a moment longer and introduce yourself to greatness. Appreciate the harmonious reunion as you confidently and boldly become reacquainted with you. Cherish the moment as you become one who endeavors to bring your personal and spiritual minds into alignment so that you may focus energy on the quote-unquote right thoughts right actions, right responses to create the life that is right for you. Smile as you embrace an individual who is now fearless, successful, strong, considerate of others, and loving in every capacity that life holds. Envision the collaboration that takes place as the two of you merge and become one with the truth and embark upon a real journey that was once